Hi guys, welcome to Algebra 1, Lesson 19. So you can see that the board is really, really full, but don't worry, this is an easy concept. And again, I think it's kind of fun because we're combining exponents and like terms. As long as you follow the rules that I give you today, these problems are gonna be super easy and go super fast in your book. Okay, let's start with this pink part right up here. If I say I have three times three times three times three times three, and I want to show this expression without actually multiplying anything, I could show that I have three to the fifth power. Try not to erase anything, okay. So I have three to the fifth power, I have five threes. Now how about here? I have three squared and three cubed, because I have two threes and three threes, but I'm still multiplying all of them. So I still have three to the fifth power. How about here? I have one three and four threes, but I'm still multiplying them, so I still have three to the fifth power. From this, I can get a rule that when I am multiplying numbers with the same base, so their base has to be the same, just like I have an x here, an x here, and the same base, then all I have to do to solve that is add their exponents. So xm times xn, m and n representing real whole numbers, all I need to do is add m plus n and keep my base of x. So whatever my base is stays the same, I just add the exponents. For example, here I have x5 times x7 times x2. So that means I have a total of how many x's? Because just like this is the total number of threes that I have, I'm looking for the total number of x's that I'm multiplying together. So I have five plus seven is 12, plus two is 14. So I have 14 x's, so I can just write that as x to the 14th power. And that's all I need to do. Let's look at this one. Five squared times five cubed times five squared. Same base, so all I need to do is add the exponents. Two plus three is five, plus two more is seven. Five to the seventh power. Okay, how about this one? P5 times P12. All I need to do is add the five and the 12, and I get P to the 17th power. Move down here x squared, x y squared, x5, y3. Here, <clears throat> excuse me, notice I don't have that multiplication symbol in between each one of my letters, but I'm still doing the same thing. I know that when I have letters that are right next to each other, that means that I'm multiplying. So, all I need to do are combine my terms that are alike. Here I have an x and an x. Those are like terms, so I can add their exponents or I should say not like terms, because this is one term, but those bases are the same, so I can add their exponents. And I get x to the seventh power, two plus five is seven. Then I have my y's left over, two plus three is five. So I have x seven, y five. And I could write that as y five, x seven, and it would be the same thing. It does not matter what order you put that in, okay? All you need to do is add your exponents. As long as you have the correct exponent with the correct base, it doesn't matter what order you write it in. So you have to listen carefully when I read off answers to make sure that you have the right base and the right exponent, no matter what order. If your order doesn't match the order I have, that's okay. Let's look at another one. X squared, Y cubed, M5, X cubed, Y squared. I'm going to start with my x's, just because it's in front. Two plus three is five, so this is x to the fifth power. Then my y's. Three plus two is five. M has nothing else, so it's just m five. Okay, let me, ah, sorry guys. My phone is yelling at me because his battery runs low. Eh, all right, now we're good. So, now we're gonna go down to this one here. Something I wanna point out. Here you have no exponent above x or above this y. So what do I say is my exponent? 
Well, we know that when x is raised to the first power, that means you have 1x, right? So x to the first power is equal to x, which means that x by itself is equal to x to the first power. So if you don't see an exponent with your number, or excuse me, with your letter, or your number, that means that your exponent is 1. Always, 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 if there's no exponent written with your base, then the exponent is 1. So when I combine these, x and x3, I'm adding 1 plus 3, because I'm adding one more x to the x's I'm multiplying together, just like this. Here's my 1x, here's my 3x's. So altogether, I have 4x's. 1 plus 3 is 4. So I have x to the fourth. Then I combine my y's. I have y to the first power, because there's no exponent written, plus y to the second power. 1 plus 2 is 3. So I have x4, y3. OK, coming over here, I have m3, p, m, x, m squared, x3, p5. We're adding in a bunch of letters, so we just have to go little by little to make sure we get all of our letters. So we have m3, m, and m squared. That's all of our m's. So this is 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So I have m to the 6th power. Then I have p plus p5. So that's 1 plus 6. Excuse me, 1 plus 5 is 6. Then I have x and x cubed. So I have 1 plus 3 is 4. So I have m6, p6, x4. You could write this p6, m6, x4. You could write this x4, m6, p6. It does not matter the order that you put your variables in as long as you have the same base with the exponent. Okay? Okay, now I want to point something out to you. When you are adding when you are adding your like terms. The rule is different. This rule of adding your exponents only applies when you are multiplying. When you are multiplying. It only applies when you are multiplying. Don't use it when you're adding. When you add, remember, you keep your base the same. You keep all of your variables and your exponents the same. The only thing that you change are your coefficients that you combine. So I have 3x squared plus 2x squared. The only thing I combine are my coefficients 3 and 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. My base, x squared and x squared, that stays the same. So I have 5x squared. It would not be 5x to the fourth. You don't combine the exponents. Okay, let's look at this one. I have x squared y p5 plus 2x y squared p5 plus 3 p5 x squared y minus 7 y squared p x5. I need to determine which ones are like terms and combine them. So here I have y squared, y, excuse me, x squared, y, and a p5. The next one, my x is not squared, so that can't be a like term. This one, I have x squared. That matches. P5, that matches. And a plain Y, that matches. So these two are like terms. Remember to include the sign that's in front of your um, coefficient. How about this one? I have Y squared. Nope, doesn't match because this Y is not squared. So these two are not like terms. I can only combine the first one and the third term. So all I do is combine my coefficients. Remember, just like when you don't have an exponent, the, co the exponent is 1. If you don't have a coefficient, that means the coefficient is understood to be 1. So I have 1 plus 3 is 4. And I can choose to write my variables any way that I want. I'm just going to use the first four. x squared, y, p5. Now I'm going to move on to this one. I have x, y squared, and p5. y squared, y squared. x, x. p5, p5. So these two, oops, let's move my sign. These two are like terms. 
So all I do is combine my coefficients. Positive 2 minus 7, or plus a negative 7, is negative 5. And then I keep my variables the same, so I'm just going to write them the way I see them first, but I don't have to, it does not matter. Alright, so I have 4x squared y p5 minus 5xy squared p5. Let's do another example. We've got two more and then you're going to do your practice. 2m3xy squared p plus 3px(y) squared m3 minus 10xy squared m3. P3 plus yx squared m3 p. Oof, that's a mouthful. All right, let's look for our like terms. To find our like terms, we look here at the variables. m3, m3, x, x, y squared, y squared, p, p. All right, these two are like terms. x, x, y squared, y squared, m, m3. Uh oh. Not like turns because their exponents don't match. Y, y squared. Okay, not like turns, their exponents don't match. So only these two are alike for this first part. So I combine 3 plus 2 is 5. So I have 5 and 3. Whoops. X, y squared, p. And again, it does not matter how you arrange your variables. Now let's look at this term and these terms. Let's compare them. x and x squared, oops, those two don't match. So that means I don't have to do anything more. I can't combine my terms anymore because this has an x and this has an x squared, so they are definitely not like terms. And so that's it. That's all you had to do for your problem. Let's look at this one now. I have 2x squared y plus 3yx squared plus x squared y squared minus x squared y minus 4x squared y, squ <coughs> y squared. So let's look at this first one. 2x squared y. x2, x2, y, y. Okay, they're like terms. x squared, x squared, y, y squared. Nope, the y's don't match, so they're not like terms. x squared, x squared. Y, Y, yep, like terms, X squared, X squared, Y squared, Y. Y's don't match, so they're not like terms. Combine my coefficients, 2 plus 3 is 5, so this is like saying minus 1, 5 minus 1 is 4, so I have 4, X squared, Y. Now let's look at this one, X squared, Y squared, X squared, X squared, Y squared, Y squared, yep, they match. So I have a positive 1 minus 4, that's a 3, negative 3, I should say. So negative 3, x squared, y squared. Whew, that was quite a lot, right? Okay, pause now and do your practice on page 90. Okay, you should be back and ready to go. Oops, sorry guys, I bumped into the camera. We are going to do, go over your practice, letter A. Now remember, you may have your variables, your letters, in a different order, and that's fine. X11, Y14, M2. When I say the number, that's the exponent. Okay, B. X8, Y6. Letter C. Negative. Now, also the terms, by the way, the order of the terms don't matter. I could switch this and have negative 3x squared in front. And a positive 4x squared y in the back. And that's the same thing, okay? So just so you know, as long as your sign that's in front comes with it, it doesn't matter the order. Okay, so c is negative 6y3x2 minus 4xy. And letter D, 2x6y plus 3xy minus 5xy6. Okay, let me know if you had any problems with that, if you have any questions, if you need any help at all. Love you guys, and I will see you in the next lesson.